Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar where we will be discussing bradycardia in PALS. Bradycardia is defined as a heart rate that is slower than what is considered normal for a child's age. Bradycardia in children and infants should be evaluated, but not all bradycardia needs to be medically managed. Intervention is required when bradycardia is symptomatic and compromises cardiovascular function. This commonly means that the heart is beating too slowly to maintain blood pressure, thereby causing shock, poor tissue perfusion, and or a change in mental status. Symptomatic bradycardia may cause a number of symptoms and signs, including low blood pressure, pulmonary edema or congestion, abnormal rhythm, chest discomfort, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, confusion, and or syncope. Bradycardia most commonly becomes symptomatic when it is of new onset for the person, um, meaning acute slowing of the heart rate. So when recognizing bradycardia, um, sinus bradycardia can be recognized with normal rhythm with a slow rate. First degree AV block um, is the PR interval is longer than 0.2 seconds. Type 1 second degree AV block um, is the PR interval increases in length until the QRS complex is dropped. Then for the type 2 second degree AV block, the PR interval is the same length with intermittently dropped QRS complex. And then for third degree AV block, the PR intervals and QRS complex are not coordinated with each other. So when responding to bradycardia, um, you need to check for heartbreak or heart rate, excuse me. Confirm abnormally low heart rate or a significant rate drop from previous normal. Do the PAL survey. A, airway. B, breathing. Check oxygen stats, administer oxygen as needed. And then C, circulation, meaning check blood pressure and rate, 12 lead ECG and establish IVIO access. Check for signs and symptoms. Are there symptoms of shock or acute change in mental status? Are there symptoms being caused by the bradycardia? Bradycardia is symptomatic and serious. If this is the case, do not delay CPR. Epinephrine, 0.01 milligrams per kilograms IO or IV, and this can be given every three to five minutes. And then atropine, um, 0.02 mg's per kilogram um, IO, IV, and this can be re repeated once. If the drugs are unsuccessful, consider transthoracic or transvenous pacing, preferably with sedation, especially if bradycardia is the result of a complete heart block or an abnormal sinus node function. You should seek expert consultation. When responding to bradycardia, the primary goal of symptomatic bradycardia treatment is to make sure the heart is adequately pumping blood to the body and so adequate perfusion. Treatment is not necessarily aimed at increasing the heart rate. Treatment should continue until symptoms or signs resolve. If the person stops having a pulse, move to the cardiac arrest protocol. Always consider the reversible causes of bradycardia in pediatrics and treat if possible. Atropine in doses less than 0.01 milligrams may worsen bradycardia, um, paradoxical bradycardia. So we're going to go through the algorithm one more time. Um, so identify and treat underlying causes. Um, so maintain a patent airway and assist breathing if necessary. If hypoxemic, administer oxygen. Use cardiac monitor to identify rhythm. Monitor blood pressure and pulse oximetry. IO, IV access and assess 12 lead ECG. If the persistent bradyarrhythmia is causing hypotension, acutely altered mental status, or signs of shock, then you want to begin CPR if the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute with poor perfusion despite oxygenation and ventilation. If those symptoms do not exist, then you're just going to monitor and observe and consider specialist consultation. Um, so if you begin performing CPR and bradycardia persists, then you're going to deliver epinephrine. Um, you can deliver atropine for increased vagal tone or primary AV block. Consider transthoracic pacing or transvenous pacing and treat underlying causes. And then if pulseless arrest develops, go to the pediatric cardi cardiac arrest algorithm. If after performing CPR for some time, the bradycardia does not persist, then you're going to monitor and observe and consider specialist consultation again. 
Some doses and details um, for the epinephrine IO IV dose. You can deliver 0 0.01 milligrams per kilogram and repeat this every three to five minutes. If IO or IV access is unavailable but endotracheal tube is in place, you may give ET dose of um, 0.1 milligram per kilogram. Then the atropine IO IV dose is 0 0.02 milligrams per kilogram and you may repeat this once. The maximum dose is 0.1 milligrams and the maximum single dose is 0.5 milligrams. Don't forget we offer online PAL certification on our site. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be on your own time with an online course or in an in-classroom setting. You can find a link to our course in the description below. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. We will catch you the next time.